Can you record high quality videos from your phone? Yes. The hardest thing to do when we first start creating content is get high quality video without spending thousands and thousands of dollars on high quality gear. At this point in time, we all have phones with pretty amazing cameras built into them, but without having the tools and the knowledge on how to use them, you're not going to get the quality you're looking for. I am honored to have Jonathan Robert, a professional videographer, as a guest in this video. Jonathan has ran his own production company as well as working professionally as an editor and producer. In this video, he'll be walking us through step by step on how to record high quality footage from our phones or DSLR cameras. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel at Jonathan Robert as a thank you for helping us in this video. Thanks for the introduction, Garrett. I really appreciate it. So we are going to be looking at how to easily film videos from your own home with little to very inexpensive gear. So many creators out there these days say that gear doesn't matter, but they never tell you how to use what you do actually have. From phones to cheap cameras, it's really, really easy and the barrier for entry is so low these days. So let's teach you some tips. I'm going to break this down into three sections. Filming on your phone, not using an app. Filming on your phone using a app that unlocks additional features and filming on a very cheap mirrorless camera such as a Sony a6000. Before starting it's very very important to note that lighting is key. Having a good lighting setup will 100% make any scene look significantly better. From using ring lights, soft boxes, LED panels it will help impact your scene so much. One top tip is to ensure that your main source of light is kept 45 degrees away from you. This gives you that natural soft nice looking lighting on the side of your face and gives you a bit of shadow on the other side, which is very, very traditional for talking heads, most things that you see online. If you can't control the light or you can't afford a, a light such as a softbox or an LED panel, do use your window light, but don't shoot directly on. Position yourself 45 degrees away from your window so you do get that natural light coming from the side. I have a video where I kind of touch on this a little bit. I'll put a link or a card on the screen somewhere. But let's go on to the first method, which is filming without an app and just filming on your phone's native camera app. So filming with your native camera app is often massively overlooked and today we're going to be using the iPhone XR for this one. All the tips though I use here will apply to any device out there. Now the one thing that makes filming from your camera phone's app so so powerful is that you can control the brightness on it and that is key. Whenever you're filming anything you want to make sure your camera's brightness is low as possible and your other light is as bright as possible. That way your phone doesn't have to work hard and doesn't add things such as grain and noise and just make the overall image quality look bad. I've got my camera open here, we can see our shot there. We are very, very simply going to tap on the screen and we're going to pull that sundial down. And as you can see, as we bring that down, it starts to look significantly nicer. So let's see how exactly how this scene looks like using the iPhone's app. As you can see, this actually looks pretty good. Granted, it's not the exact same composition as before, so it does look slightly different, but visually it's nice. The brightness looks good. We're getting that nice light from the side and we brought down the exposure. We brought down the phone's brightness to make sure that we're not overexposed. We're not looking horrible. In short, we're not looking like this. And that's when it gets bad. So we make sure that's nice and low and we get that nice looking image. And again, I feel like with a nice bit of surrounding lighting, maybe a bit more powerful light on my face, this would be really good. Next up, we're gonna look at a thing called Filmic Pro, which is an app that you can get both on Apple and on Android. This section will be a little bit more hefty as it's got a bit more technical terms in it, but I'm gonna fly through these in the most simple way possible. What we're gonna do is jump straight into the app. As you can see, things look significantly more different the minute we turn into this app. We've got more things on the screen, there's a lot more going on. On our right-hand side, we've got our zoom rocker, so we can zoom in on our image, we can zoom out on it, and then above that, we have our focus, but because I'm using the front-facing camera, I can't control that, but the exact same premise applies when you rock that you change the focus. On this side we have this number here which in short is simply the brightness of the image. As you can see when I pull that down the brightness goes down as I go up the brightness goes up. Very similar to the sundial that we had on the native app on the iPhone. This number is something called ISO and simply all it is is the higher the number the more sensitive your phone camera is to light. The lower the number the less sensitive the darker the image. As we learned from the previous step the darker the image the clearer and cleaner and nicer the image is going to look. So what we're going to do straight away is bring that number right down. Let's bring it to about there. And that looks all right. We're then going to tap on that number and that's just going to lock it into place. The next thing we need to learn here is frame rate. So frame rate, you might, you know it from kind of playing games and stuff like that or know it from movies. Frame rate is effectively the amount of frames that are captured per second, FPS. When you shoot any talking head, when you shoot any cinematic sequence, you always want to shoot in 24 frames a second. To do that on the app, we're simply going to click on the cog, we're going to go to frame rate, 
and we're gonna make sure we have 24 taps. The next step is key here. So there's something called shutter speed and you can see that on here, which is numbered one over 48. If you're shooting in 24 frames a second, you wanna make sure that this number is always double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting 24 frames a second, that number is gonna be over one over 48. If you're shooting 60 frames a second, that number is gonna be one over 120. I'm not gonna go into mass detail, I have a full video on frame rate, which I'll link up in a card. But in short, having this number to be double your frame rate simply means you get the most accurate motion blur that the eye can perceive. So now using this app, if we pop it, up here. Our scene looks pretty decent. Again, this would be a really viable way to shoot YouTube videos. I used to shoot all my YouTube videos using this app. So take it from my own experience. This is how I used to shoot it. Those videos did well. I have previous videos with well over 10,000, 13K, 14K views on them just using this phone app. If you're enjoying the video so far, please do consider giving this a like and heading over to my channel. When you're there, it'd be great to have a little look around. I do things from lifestyle tips, production tips, behind the scenes, how to use cameras, the work. So if you're interested in videography and upping your game when it comes to filming, photographing, creativeness in your life, do consider heading over to my channel and giving it a subscribe. So you've spent a couple of months filming on your iPhone, you've learned to use the Filmic Pro app, and you're looking to advance yourself to the next level. That is when we start exploring buying mirrorless cameras. We always go for mirrorless cameras first rather than DSLR cameras, simply because they're so, so much cheaper and way more portable and affordable. This camera here cost me 300 pounds and I use this on client shoots. So you can 100% use this in YouTube videos. Like I said, it's around 300 pounds, so it's not a very bad price. It's very, very reasonable. If you're looking to upgrade as well and you want to invest in your channel, moving something to like this is more than enough. All of the settings that we just learned in Filmic Pro, such as frame rate, ISO, both apply in here. Is the minute you get one of these, it will be the exact same kind of setup. However, you will notice a new thing on here, and we're gonna talk about that now. This new thing that you notice is something called aperture. In short, aperture is basically how much light your lens lets into your camera as opposed to how much your camera can see. The lower the number, the more light that is let in. The higher the number, the less light. Very, very simple concept. The one nice thing that comes with this is something called bokeh. Bokeh is just the background blur. So as you can see in this image, I have that lovely berry background. And the minute you start having that in your videos, you instantly elevate the quality of your videos and you go to that more professional look. The main reason for this is just because it looks nice. It looks creamy as it were. Lots of people describe the blurry background as a creamy look, weird, but it does something even better for you, especially in a talking head like this. It helps separate you from the background. As you may have saw in those videos that I shot on my iPhone, the background was in focus, but so was I, which meant the entire image was quite busy. Because everything around me is blurred, but I'm in focus, it draws the attention to me and draws focus to me. When it comes to doing this though, we're gonna go for the what you can see on the A6000, but basically the first number here, that is our shutter. This number here is our ISO, as it says, this is our exposure, which basically just means how much light it's being seen, and it's saying that it's underexposed at the minute. If it was plus two, it would be overexposed. But this new number here is what our aperture is, and as you can see, it's set at 2.8. This is, this is the same aperture as what this lens is giving me here, so this is a very nice, blurry background. If you were to purchase the A6000, you'd possibly get a kit lens, and that number only goes as low as four. However, that is more than enough to ensure that your videos have that blurry background. As you can see though, as I twist the dial, the number goes up and the image slowly gets darker. And if you were extra observant then, you would have noticed that Coke can got slightly more in focus as I went up into the higher numbers. And that is basically a really short overview on how to shoot it from your own home. As we saw, using your phone is very, very viable. I used to use a phone for all my videos and some of those videos had well over 20K views. Being able to elevate to the next level and using an app such as Filmic Pro helps you just learn some additional skills when it comes to filmmaking. And then making that leap to a cheap mirrorless such as this Sony a6000 will help just add an even more professional edge to your videos. The barrier for entry is so much lower than it used to be now and having a phone like everyone has a phone and with a good enough lighting setup and being able to control the brightness on your phone you can get a high quality good looking image. In short if you want to start making content don't go out and buy anything and see what you can do on your phone with these skills that you've learned today. If you want more tips on videography, photography, lifestyle tip, tips on how to be more creative, then do consider heading over to my channel and giving us a subscribe. But 
A big thanks to all you viewers for letting me be on the channel. A massive thank you to Garrett for having me on. I hope you've learned something today. And if you've got any comments, let's have a chat down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, Jonathan. This video is going to be a big help for a lot of people. If you're a creator interested in learning, growing and helping others, make sure you like this video. It really helps me know whether or not this video was valuable to you and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that we can all start creating better content together. Thank you so much for watching this one and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.